this segment is going to be uh, Psychic Predicts Alien Contact by 2028. So, Psychic Athos Salome, Salam, Salom, I'm probably murdering your name. Uh, it was Dharmathy, I got that right, for Tammy's last <laughs> name. So, known as the Living Nostradamus. So, Athos Salam is known as the Living Nostradamus, predicts that Humanity will make contact with extraterrestrial life by 2028, according to a recent article by The Mirror. Oh, man, we know how trusted The Mirror is. Okay, Salome, who has accurately predicted events such as the death of Queen Elizabeth II and Elon Musk's acquisition of Twitter, claims his alien's prediction is already being supported by scientific discoveries. Last month, Salome stated that Quote, governments and religious bodies will need to grapple with the moral implications, unquote, of discovering alien life forms between 2026 and 2028. He believes NASA and the European Space Agency will identify complex life forms on Jupiter's moons, Europa, within this time frame. The year 2028 will mark the uh, recognition by people of the existence among them of, of inhabitants of other planets, Salom said. Recent scientific findings support these predictions. According to the Mir st uh, story, researchers discovered potato-like lumps on the Pacific Ocean seafloor that produce oxygen without light, challenging current understanding of how life emerged on Earth. Salom commented that these findings should push, push governments and religious institutions to think their views on life and humanity's place in the universe. My predictions about the discovery of extraterrestrial life are being confirmed as new scientific discoveries challenge our understanding of biology and the origins of life, he asserted. So that was interesting. Um, I, You know, I guess I'll just start by saying that whoever this quote unquote psychic is um, again, it, I'm not a huge fan of psychics in a way. I know I've been involved in the paranormal. I have friends that are psychics and stuff like I'm just not a huge, huge believer too much. I I'm always been a little bit skeptical on psychics. A lot of times, especially nowadays on some of the internet stuff, you got guys that'll make like a hundred predictions. And then when they get close to the right one, they start deleting ones. And then eventually they're like, you see, I said this years ago or whatever. I said this yeah. a long time ago. And then meanwhile, all the other predictions that they said were all deleted or, or destroyed. So I mean, but uh, what this person is saying in their article, I mean, this has already been said for how long, you know what I mean? Like the government pretty much already said, <laughs> there's right. aliens so i don't really understand the prediction like that we're going to have actual proof of these beings on different um planets is is that like physical visual proof is that what they mean by that well i think like the potato lumps that they were talking about on the thing that was producing oxygen without light i think that was like them saying hey like in in other planets they they could be producing oxygen under these depths of because you know we do know that there's potential oceans mm -hmm. uh, on other planets and moons and of course Europa has been always a subject of that especially since the uh, Stanley Kubrick movies uh, 2001 and 2010 so you know there's always going to be those fascinations with Europa as well but um, I think that's kind of what they were talking about in that. Mm -hmm. In, in the article and um but i i think yeah you're right in the sense that this is something that it's almost a little bit of an easy layup like if you're a psychic you can just kind of pick like right <laughs> right but like well but because here's the thing like they the government has said ufos but they still never pressed and got there's still nothing hard evidence about the aliens and stuff. Right. And yeah. I do want to touch on what you were talking about earlier, which is potential for, is it demons? Or what are we really looking at when we see these UFOs? Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to touch on that here in a second. Um, so I, I think, again, this guy is pretty much stating a little bit of the obvious stuff, in my opinion. Oh, I think so, too. Like. 
So, I mean, we're obviously going to figure that out sooner than or later. So let's look at the let's let's turn to the topic of of UFOs themselves then, and maybe some of your personal theories and and stuff like that. Like, do you first of all, I guess I would say is what do you think about 2028 and actually making uh, alien contact, like actually communicating with with an alien that might be on. Uh, like a video or YouTube. <laughs> That's verified. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The way that things are going in this world right now, I think it might be before then. <laughs> I don't know. Anything's possible, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. Um, yeah. Um, and then you were mentioning something about the demons earlier. Um, mm-hmm. Like, so what are your thoughts? Do you think that aliens or that these ufos do you think that they're actually from another planet or do you think this could be something spiritual i mean it possibly could be spiritual I, this is something i've talked to a couple other people about you know there's some similarities between demonic stuff and and um aliens i i did work a case one time the lady thought she was having aliens coming to her um but a lot of the things that she was saying was happening sounded very demonic in nature as well. So there might be some type of connection there. Um, Maybe not... They may not be demons themselves, but maybe there's some type of connections between the demonic and aliens. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, Wayne like Monroe... The Fourth Kind. Have you seen that movie, The Fourth Kind? I think so. Where she was... The aliens were coming to her and, like... That movie, like when I was watching it, like yes, it was an alien movie, but it felt very demonic to me. Right. Well, and and you might be right, and you probably would have more of a beat on that than most people. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Wayne Monroe said that a spiritual person to me is, or as a spiritual person to me, it appears to be a spiritual war that is going on. It's pretty scary to think about. Uh, about really, it's like. Uh, it's angels and demons battle. And I think Wayne was mostly talking about when we were talking about in the previous, like maybe reality as well, but I think this also could apply. And Alexander said, I guess was laughing when I said, you know, that's verified on on YouTube. Um, But so I, I've entertained this thought because I do believe in supernatural. Um, I'm very down to earth when it comes to my beliefs. I don't feel like I'm extreme. Right. Um, I've always looked for the truth in the middle. And although, although I may not be out like, you know, um, you know, uh, banging the Bible around and stuff, but I am very much a fan. Uh, I've read the Bible of it, especially when I went back and read the Bible again, like other times as an adult, like later on as a paranormal investigator, and I found it super fascinating in the Old Testament of how much they talked about portals and things that looked like UFOs and aliens and stuff. It's really, really cool. There's a lot of cool stuff in there. And um, and where I'm going with this is that this is you got to think about the Bible. You got to think about the Book of Enoch. Uh, pretty much a lot of your stuff from the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. These were ancient writings um that they held dearly and felt that they were very factual Mm -hmm. um and that so they wanted to preserve these you know these these basically like these library type monks and they so they preserved all this stuff in these dead sea scrolls um so they these are some super super important documents um and a lot of them talk about these things and you know one of the, the the main stories that was was the book of Enoch that got into the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. And it really, and it also fills in the blanks in the Bible. When you get into Genesis and talking about the fallen angels and stuff, this, the book of Enoch was supposed to be in the Bible. Um, Mm -hmm. In fact, the Orthodox, the Ethiopian Orthodox church, they still have the book of Enoch in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And, but it goes into the fallen angels and the whole story about that. Now, I, I'm not going to tell the whole story, but it's amazing. Uh, but ultimately, you know, these fallen angels, they they give 
they 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 mate with the earth women and there's all these cryptids we're talking you know uh all all the all the stuff you you read about in like greek mythology or your minotaurs and your centaurs and like all these hybrid creatures giants you know there was these big wars and of course there was a big flood uh mm-hmm. god said hey we gotta we gotta you know purge all this um all this craziness from, from these uh, fallen angels that we got to purge all this bad, bad blood out there. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. Like when, when you see these fallen angels, we hear stories about even Bigfoots and, you know, these dogmen and mothmen and stuff, you know, I still can believe that we have these, this leftover supernatural beings. So maybe they're fallen angels, maybe they're current angels or or demons possibly uh, i'm not too convinced they're demons but they they do seem to be some type of um, angels or whatnot but they really could could fall into a a more of a biblical theory mm-hmm. um it, it it is pretty wild so i mean i think wayne brings up that point when he's he's talking about being a spiritual person and you know things about angels and angels and demons balance i think there's multiple things going on um, I do believe that because we have free will on earth, you know, we do some pretty bad things, <laughs> you know, and I think that the humans are battling and I think there's a spiritual battle also going on in the, in, at the same time. Oh, absolutely. I've been talking about that for years and, and it's just, it's every day. It's like more obvious to me. And I feel like if there was ever a veil, it's gone at this point. I, that's how I feel at least like things are just so bad around us and there's no way that that is just because man is evil you know what I mean like I feel like there's just something bigger yeah and, I mean, and when you think about demons and people you know people want to tie demons to Christianity and the fact is that it dates back way further than that and every culture and religion like have their own versions of demons and so I feel like this evil has been here for way longer than the Bible. Well, and regardless, you, no matter how you want to approach it on a, a, a Christianity, non-Christianity, you know, and you're right. There's There's been in all cultures um, the the good and evil. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that there had to be that balance when, when the universe was created uh, and I believe that there is, I do believe in God because I've been in Ron and paranormal. And, and I think that when, that, when you believe in something beyond normal life, <laughs> when you believe in paranormal, you have to believe in some kind of God usually, um, oh, yeah. I, 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 I believe in God period. But like, I think that you have to have both. If you didn't have bad, you wouldn't know what good was. Exactly. Exactly. So when people are like, there's no such thing as demons, it's like, <laughs> okay <laughs> just turn on the tv <laughs> that's, right. Right. that's fine you TV. <laughs> live in your little bubble but um, yeah, no, yeah I mean, watch there's... watch mainstream media there you go <laughs> pick one pick one pick any right? of them pick any of them you'll see you'll see demons all right but uh but no i i get it like you'll see evil and uh scott Schuma says every religion has a form of an exorcism absolutely uh but yeah i mean when you go back to mesopotamia days um and you know you you'll always see the talk of demons and evil spirits and And like even in the pyramids they were drawn on their weren't weren't they the pictures of like demons and stuff like that even like way back then well, and what you really find in the hieroglyphs is a lot of the hybrid creatures, mm-hmm. you know, and again, this is why, you know, again, whether people want to believe in the fallen angel story or whatnot, all of these, all of the, the, there's, there's a ton of religions that were depicting hybrid creatures, mm-hmm. whether you want to believe they're alien or whether you want to believe maybe those hybrid creatures are a form of an evil spirit, um, but in any case, most of what you find in those terms were um hybrid creatures and when mm-hmm. they were depicted now there is an ancient tablet it doesn't date back as it is one of the oldest tablets and i want to say 1500 bc mm-hmm. um and there's a uh cuneiform that has 
that does talk about uh, demons. Right. Um, and I want to say Babylonian, maybe. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Um, but again, um, one can argue whether that comes before the Bible or not. That to me, that doesn't matter. Like it's we're talking about the overall history of humankind. Like as far as just when people are talking about this stuff, whether it's talking about it in the Bible or in other forms, cuneiforms, uh, hieroglyphics, any of that stuff. Seeing a glimpse, those are all images and stories back into a time where we weren't around. Right. So it's amazing. I think, like the big problem of it, though, like when you want to talk about like demons and in respect to the paranormal world or community, like I think so many people say that they don't believe because they don't believe in God. So they automatically say they go together, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that's the thing. You have to be able to look at everything as a whole. Mm -hmm. And if you can look at everything and you say, you know what? I, I, th I think the world is a certain way and maybe the Bible is just a good book. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something, maybe you do agree with it. Maybe you agree with that and other things. You mm -hmm. can agree with different things. Um, but regardless, people should always try to look at, at everything anyways. You should always right. try to look at, and that's, that's, that's the argument I get into sometimes when I do talk to certain uh, people that only want to say, look, the Bible is as far as I go, and I'm not going to read the book of Enoch. I'm not going to read the book of Jairus. I'm not going to read some of these other ancient texts that, you know, either expand upon those things or back those things up. And then they get very closed minded and they get very defensive. Mm -hmm. And it's like, mm -hmm. why? Why would you like I, I get it? Like, I understand you have your faith and you have your belief, but you should also be open minded enough to to learn all of these stories because it may even in so for me learning all these things actually increased my faith in God. Exactly. I, when I wrote my book, I, I got, it brought me closer to God because I had the research and, and read other things other than just the Bible. And I had to read other ancient scriptures and even, um, passages from like the Jewish Bible and all these things. Right. Like you, you really have to expand your mind and, and look at and try to fill in the blanks with all of those things that were happening at those, at those, at those time frames. Exactly. I feel like people who are so close minded to stuff like that really don't belong in the paranormal because if you're not willing to accept other things than your own beliefs, then why are you even the paranormal is the unknown, right? <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> right. it's all theory at the end of the day. Right. And, and that's the other thing that bugs me, too, is when when uh, people start to get um, like, this is it. The This is exact way that paranormal is and whatever. It's like, no, you don't you don't know that. Like we all have. Mm -hmm. and, and look, I can just say this. I think people that's been doing it for years, you tend to kind of see the same things over and over. You see patterns and you kind of see where the truth lies in the middle. That's why I have a certain middle of the road belief, because a lot of the things I believe in and talk about, these are things that are pretty, uh, pretty base. They're, they're things that I've witnessed over the years are the same things over and over and over. So you see patterns. If you start to get into some really weird left wing or right wing paranormal talk, <laughs> not political, <laughs> Uh, if you get to the extreme sides of things, then you don't see those things. It's like, ah, you know, and, and it's, you know, you, you kind of, I don't, I don't discount anything, but I also no. look at what do I experience every time I go and, and investigate what, what is the patterns? What does seem to be the, the things like that? But for me, it's like, not, not every situation is the same. Um, you know, sure. like I have an attachment, somebody else had an attachment, they were able to control it or get rid of it or whatever. And then, you know, they'll say, well, this is what worked for me. This is what's going to work for you. Well, no, because not every, not every situation is the same. My attachment's not what your attachment was. So I don't know. I feel like people are just so close-minded. <laughs> Oh, right. Even world. after learning that there was UFOs out there from the government. <laughs> 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 right. I don't know. I just think we have to be open. Like I've worked so many residential cases and I've helped 
clients that came from different cultural beliefs or religious beliefs. And I had to learn more about their religion and beliefs to be able to help them. Um, And that's really important. And I feel like a lot of people aren't willing to do stuff like that. That's true. 